10:14 right now, and you know, this morning we are just remembering a beloved TV dad, comedian Bob Saget. This was a punch to the gut yesterday when we heard mm -hmm. this news. From Full House to America's Funniest Home Videos, he's considered one of the nicest guys in Hollywood who could never say no, especially to our next guest. I can't say no to you. I've known you my whole career. I can't say no to Jeff. No one can say no to him. Ask him. Who says no to you? Um, according to Paul Provenza, nobody. I think it's true. <laughs> I think he's right. Comedian Jeffrey Garion wasn't only a colleague, but a longtime friend of Bob Saget. And he joins us this morning to share some of his memories with us. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Hazel. How are you guys? Oh, we're Hi, great. Ben. Hey, Jeff. Oh, we are yeah. so sorry for your loss. I know Bob, Bob was in Florida as part of his I Don't Do Negative comedy tour. So when was the last time you spoke with him? You know, he sent me a message when I was in the hospital with COVID double pneumonia. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, he, well, he, that's the kind of guy he was. Mm -hmm. he, he sent me a message. When I was in the hospital, I had a heart attack. Uh, the comedy community rallied around me, and he was one of the people that sent me such a supportive message. Uh, my last interview with him was at Madison Square Garden when he came out for the Garden of Laughs mm. for needy kids. Uh, yeah. Bob would always come out when there was a charity involved, you know, not only for scleroderma, which was his favorite charity, yeah. but for any, where, anything where people needed him. He just wanted to go out and make people laugh. And, and he did. Literally, literally one of the nicest guys in show business. You know, I, I've been covering the scene for more than 20 years, and Bob was a really a one-of-a-kind, yeah. definitely a one-of-a-kind. You know, there's a so, lot of speculation, Jeff, about what may have happened, you know, because he posted on his Instagram page a picture of himself just hours after his last yeah. comedy show, which was in Florida. Was there any indication that anything was wrong? Not that I knew. I mean, and I certainly wouldn't know something like that. But hopefully it was painless. You know, he, he talked a lot about death in his book, Dirty Daddy, when I, uh, when <laughs> I interviewed him about that. He said to me, it wasn't about being dirty. It was about death and comedy. Mm. Hmm. He had a lot of tragedy in his life. Oh, really? You know, he lost two sisters. And then uh, when, when his, his dad passed away in 2007, very close to his dad. And then he lost his mom in 2014. And he thought a lot about death, you wow. know. And so it was just so bizarre that he happened to die on his, on his sister's birthday. Oh, wow. Oh, no. So was, com sister, was comedy, you think, his way of coping with all of that loss and keeping his spirit? Well, they say that about all comedians, yeah. that we're all, dealing, we're, all, we're all dealing with negativity from our past, you know. It's uh, my positive energy got me through the heart attack and through COVID. And, you know, I can personally speak to that, that staying positive is very important because it's very hard to fight anything like when you're in a negative space, your immune system is not functioning. When you're yeah. positive, your immune system is much stronger. And so comedians go out and they share their truth. Mm. And Bob, Bob was one of those guys, yeah. uh, just a very special being. Yeah. And the whole world is shocked, but especially yeah. the comedy community. So many people knew him as a dear friend. I was not only a friend, but a, a great fan of his. Right. Well, I think so many were, right? I mean, even my generation, he, we, I grew up, he was America's dad. And not only yeah. was he America's dad because everybody watched Full House, but he was one of those few people, I think, that really had two hit shows on at the same time because he was the dad on Full House, but he was also the, the host of America's Funniest Home Videos. And it was like back in the times where you gathered all in front of the television before YouTube yeah. and you can watch some of these videos. And so, you know, he had such a wide career and impact on so many people. What are some of your favorite memories, Jeff? Well, when he, when he was the... Uh the roast master for the Jack Black roast, you know, I used to write for the Friars roast for many years. And uh, around 2013, he was chosen as the roast master, which was, uh, a, it's a big honor to be a roast master, you know. And I made the mistake of calling him the day before to, to offer him jokes. And he kidded <laughs> me about it on the red carpet. He's like, oh, one day you give me, you know, he had been preparing for weeks because it's a big deal, you know. And uh, when I interviewed him at Madison Square Garden, uh, you know, he was so humble, as famous as he was, very humble. When I would talk about him, he would turn the attention to the other people before me. Wow. He'd go, you know, Chris Rock is here and John Oliver and, uh, all, and all these other stars, and I'm going to go on. He goes, and 
and he actually said to me, he goes, he was going to try out some of his new serious material, but then he gave it up and he said, no, I just want to go out and make people laugh yeah. because that's what I do. And he loved that. You know, he, he absolutely loved it. Well, the character he had on, on Full House, Danny Tanner, you know, when, when that show went off the air the first time, I remember feeling like, oh, I'm going to miss my family. You just felt like you were a part of that family. So when he came back a second time around with Fuller House, did he ever talk to you about returning to that role again? Yes. In one of the interviews that we did, he said, it'll never go away. Mm. It can't kill it. <laughs> it, will, it will always be there. Yeah. There will always be a full house. And, you know, but it's so interesting because he had that other side of him as well, where he, you know, went, uh, in his stage comedy, he distanced himself from that, from that character. He was very diverse, Bob, you know? And you would know that from his appearance in The Aristocrats. Yeah. Back in 2005, <laughs> you know, he and Gilbert Gottfried were very famous for their renditions of that joke. Right. which obviously we cannot do on television. Well, yeah. <laughs> or you'd lose your license, you know, well, basically. Yeah. I mean, that was the thing. He's like, you know, he played this this uh, this clean da dad on Full House, but he was known for being provocative yep, and, in, the beginning, and in, his, in his comedy life. And it was so it was like to totally juxtaposed to what, he, what people knew on television. Um, Jeff, we could talk all day about this, but we're just out of time here. And I so appreciate you being here and offering your perspective. And by the way, I'm really glad that you are okay yourself after that bout with COVID and the double pneumonia. So it's good to see you. Thank you so much, Dan. We have a long history. You were the one who interviewed me on the book that Bob Saget gave me the, the blurb for I know. back in 2008. I so know, I remember thank it well. Thank you so much. It's so great to see you guys. Thanks for having me on. All right, Jeff. Always good to see you. Thank you very much. All right, 1021, he's a great guy. He's got, yeah. He has his own book, by the way, and he's a big comedy, big comedy and, uh, comedian here in New York City. So it was good to see him. 1021 still has...